If we could do a top contour survey of the greats of astronomy, um, wh where would it start? Mm. Starting with who, uh, people who got it wrong, yeah, <laughs> and then we're and then uh, correct each other. Like we, if we were going to do a fast uh, a fast sprint through these, mm. yeah. Uh, where would we start? Well, you'd have to start with like, you know, Gog or whatever, the, you know, the first cavemen and women, you know, as I said, 40 Char Charting years. stars on the wall. Exactly. Of the we don't know who they are. Telling yes. their, their youngsters like, okay, you know, because those stars are there relative to that ridge or yep. the, uh, et cetera, days are getting longer, days are getting shorter. That's right. Ergo, hunt now. Ergo, mm -hmm. collect stuff Harvest. to hunker down. Um, maybe even um, don't reproduce now, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. even behavioral restraint. 100%. Maybe reproduce now. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be much right. more, you know, optimal right. time for that. Right. Exactly. So tens of thousands pre-antiquity, mm -hmm. you would say. Then the, I would say fast forward, you know, to the maybe uh, Egyptian epoch, you know, 5000 BCE, so to speak, mm -hmm. when they had a also a very uh, zodiological and astrological conception of, of these objects. But and and yet they would build things, you know, in, in relation to the positions of stars and constellations. Sundial emerges. Sundial um, obelisks, you know, things that were used, primitive things. Stonehenge also, I think it's like twenty thousand years ago. They believe it's related to some uh, astronomical obser observations. They're not entirely certain about that. We have to double click on yeah. Stonehenge. <laughs> uh, how do you think it got there? Uh, you know, uh, it's one of those uh, great mysteries. That's uh, I think it's less controversial Stonehenge than the pyramids. The pyramids seem to be like almost you know they lead people into thinking about aliens and, but, and all but sorts what do you of what do you think of is it i mean it, given their their mass given their location given what we knew about populations then mm -hmm. and given what we know about the strength of people and the tools they had at the time is it reasonable to assume that people built these things <laughs> I, I mean you, certainly i mean you'd have to convince me that people didn't build them but you know, exactly how they built it is 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 a great question i mean so for example i, I mentioned this when i was on uh, joe rogan's show i said you know if you measure the bases of the pyramids it turns out that they're a ratio of a cubit which is uh, actually cubits not quantum bits like you and your dad talked about but but uh, cubits is the length of the pharaoh's forearm it's basically a foot and a half roughly so back then if you were like the president you were also the metric standard for all of civilization wild and, and it, it makes it's sort of it... like uh, models on instagram right everyone's trying to attain these <laughs> what's the standard that's right exactly what's the standard? right that's wild. right wow so the I'm pharaoh's instagram forearm famous. is this, and is this about carrying carrying items and yeah well it was just for length or like a foot Mm -hmm. We talk about a foot. It was a pharaoh's mm -hmm. sure. foot. Yeah, that's where we get those from, right? Mm -hmm. So there was only kind of one rough standard for calibration, which is incredibly important for removing systematic effects in science in general. So you had a calibration standard. Now we have like a bar of platinum. We've defined, you know, the second in terms of uh, oscillations of a, of a certain atom uh, called cesium and how many times it oscillates per, per second. Sure, a degree, right? Yeah, yeah a so, calorie, right? So yeah. now we yeah. want to uh, define those in terms of physical quantities, not in terms of people. Um, and so doing that has been a great advance forward in science. And we've only recently gotten rid of what are called artifacts. So it used to be there was a rod that was one meter long. And the meter was originally defined as um, 69,000, I, I forget, uh, of the distance from the North Pole to Paris. But that obviously depends on assuming the Earth is a perfect sphere, which it's not, right? right it's kind and, of chubby around the middle, Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. It bulges because it's, all, it's an oblate spirit, right? Exactly. Um, and so... All these things that were relics, uh, we want to get rid of them and tie them to fundamental properties of, say, a quantum system that's very pure and we can isolate it. We don't want to use a pharaoh's foot either, so we, we have to come with a link standard. So now we use the speed of light times the second, and we can define things in those terms. But back then, yeah, so they didn't know that. But I told Joe, as I said, if you measure the base of all the, the great pyramids at Giza, they're all multiples of a cubit uh, times so many numbers of the number pi. So like, but pi wasn't known to them. You know, pi wasn't known to be irrational until Greeks um, and, uh, and Euclid proved that it was irrational um, uh, and that, you know, it didn't come from a computational, it couldn't easily be obtained from, it had an infinite uh, number of digits, right? So how did these Egyptians know that? An alien told them, no. The way they did it is they laid it out. They used a surveyor's tool. One of the surveyor's tool is a stick with a wheel on it. So the wheel's a circle, so you got so many multiples, they just counted, and that's how... So we confuse a lot so of they things. they stumbled into pi. Exactly, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. walked all over. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to always posit supernatural explanations for things. The answer is simply, we don't know. I certainly don't know how Stonehenge was built, nor how, do I know how the pyramids were built. Um, but it's not 
you would have to convince me that it was built by some other means other than people and the tools that were available to them. Yeah, and there's like, a lot of likewise, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not convinced it came from extraterrestrial Yeah, so I don't remember sources. how we got on this, but... Uh, well, but I, yeah, so we were marching keeping, through, yeah. mm-hmm. so we were marching oh, through, right. yeah. um, so we have the our ancient ancestors, mm-hmm. and then uh, at what point do we get to um, Copernicus and Galileo? Yeah. Uh, then it was, uh, yeah, then it was Copernicus who had ideas but couldn't prove them. He had no data to substantiate the Copernican or sun-centered model of the universe, which is also, by the way, you know, almost everything in science is wrong, right? Copernicus is wrong. The sun is not the center of the solar system, right? There, there's the center of our solar system is inside the sun because the planets orbit around it and they orbit around an elliptical pattern, which has two foci. So he believed the, the, the orbits were all circles. So he's wrong, but he's more right than Aristotle. So that's why science progresses, right? Newton was right about gravity until uh, he was wrong when Einstein proved them wrong, right? So then you come up to, um, after him, Kepler discovered yeah, the laws of the elliptical motion of planets and, um, and, and their patterns that we still use. We discovered an exoplanet, my, my colleague David Kipping, I want to introduce you to. Uh, he's discovered exomoons. These are moons around other planets, some of which are in the habitable zone of their host star. And some of them have sun-like stars and are Earth-sized planets. It's incredible. There could be, as I said, a link between life evolving on Earth due to the moon on our planet. So too, on an exoplanet, it could require an exomoon, which he's discovered or thinks he has. He's actually very cautious and hasn't said it explicitly. So Kepler's laws underpin all those discoveries, even to this day, 400 years later. Then Galileo, immediately afterwards with the telescope, phases of Venus uh, that only occur if the Earth is not the center of the solar system. The rings of Saturn, he, he had uh, notions about those. He accidentally discovered the planet Neptune. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Um, and then he, uh, of course, the moons of Jupiter p- falsified the notion that the Earth is the center of the solar system because these moons are going around Jupiter, not around the Earth. So uh, that's com- completely torpedoed the notion of the true nature of the Aristotelian or Ptolemaic uh, Earth-centered cosmology. Then uh, soon after that, uh, astronomers measured things like the speed of light um, using eclipses of the uh, moons of Jupiter. Uh, they measured distances to Saturn. They, they mapped out the solar system. And then from there, using parallax, you know, you can kind of gauge the uh, triangulation and using trigonometry, measure the structure of our galaxy. Uh, William Herschel and his uh, sister, Caroline Herschel, was the first uh, female astronomer, first female scientist. She was the first person to use the scientific method and become a fellow of the Royal Society in in Great Britain. Um, And then later off uh, after that, we come to the era of the the last, you know, kind of uh, the big developments in technology were photographic plates after that, spectrographs, dispersion of light onto photographic material. You could preserve your memory. You didn't use sketches like Galileo did. And then up until Hubble, when Hubble discovered two major things, which was one was that the Milky Way was a galaxy. It wasn't the entire universe. There were other galaxies, island universes of billions of stars. And then he discovered the expansion of the universe with help from uh, an astronomer who doesn't get a lot of attention. A lot of the women in astronomy uh, got really short shrift. Um, People discovered how fusion works in the sun. Women, uh, um, Gapaspachin at Harvard, and then Henrietta Leavitt, um, who who measured this relationship between the size and and brightness of objects called Cepheid variables that Hubble then used to make his law that proved that the universe is expanding. And then after that, people like Penzies and Wilson discovering the uh, microwave and radio astronomy, Robert Jansky, all the way up until, you know, my colleagues today, um, some of whom I've interviewed, um, Adam Reese and, and um, Brian Schmidt and uh, Barry Barish, uh, who wrote the foreword to my, my second book, um, detecting gravitational waves, the accelerating expansion of the universe due to dark energy, first Nobel Prize in astronomy in 2011. Uh, followed up 2015 discovery of uh, 2017 discovered gravitational waves from inspiraling black holes. It, you know, there's so many, and there's so many. Yeah, you know, I've been blessed to know many of them, and I have them as my academic, you know, uh, pedigree. 